I'm told that James Harden is seriously considering a return to Houston. I'm here, we're, we're playing very very well, and yeah, I don't know where they're working from. Can Philadelphia win without Embiid? Harden, sizing up Harden, it's a three. What a perfect way to end the second round. Game seven between the Celtics and the Sixers. This is disappointing. A disappointing end for the Sixers. Our season is over, so. Sums it up right there. He has the option to be a free agent. Scenario A would be to bring James back. The Houston Rockets lose a, a real suitor in free agency. Welcome back to NBA Today. All right, so 5 o'clock Eastern, my friends. That is the deadline for James Harden's de decision on his $35.6 million player option for next season. So, Zach, he's taking his time on this one. We're heading all the way up to the deadline. What happens if he opts out? I mean, he could still resign with Philadelphia, and okay. I think that there's a very good chance that still happens. If he opts out and leaves, then they're kind of in a pickle because I'm sure Daryl Morey has plan A, B, C, and D already in place, but they don't have a great mechanism to replace James Harden if he leaves. They don't have enough cap room to get an equivalent player. And look, James Harden was, let's be polite and say, up and down in the playoffs. Okay. It seemed like he either played unbelievably well or was like, what happened here? He was really, really good in the regular season when he was healthy. I thought he had an all-NBA level season when he was healthy, and he was a big part of Joel Embiid getting that endless parade of open 13-foot jumpers, 13-foot jumpers. They need James Harden. Mm. What they really need from James Harden is to be more consistent in the playoffs, but a lot of other teams have needed that too, and it hasn't happened. But they, if, they, if he actually left, unless Daryl's got some plan, and maybe he does, that's an earthquake in the Eastern Conference because they're they're still I know everyone's down on them because of how ugly that series ended in game seven. They're still a really, really good team the way they are. Do you agree, Vince, that the ideal here for Philadelphia is that James Harden comes back? I do, I do, but at the same time, I feel like you need to allow Maxi to level up. I, I love his game. I think he's an important piece too. And you give them a different dynamic. They play faster. He's a guy you can get the ball and let him go and get buckets, it makes the game easier for Joel and, and James Harden. And I think sometimes, you know, for as, like you said, for as good as James was in, in the regular season, sometimes the playoff when he's not playing well, you need a guy you can just get the ball to and just just go run. Right. Have a motor. And, and that, so I just feel like even if he comes back, you have to go up, you have to level up Maxi. So, yes, I, I agree with everything you said. Like, Philly does need to bring him back, right? If you're talking about maximizing the championship window with Joel Embiid, that's what it is. But ultimately, you, you say that they're down, uh, that they might be down on this team because of the way they finish. Or they could be down on this team because of the way they finished the last few multiple of years, whether it's injuries, poor performances, lack of showing up. And then you add James Harden, who is a first ballot Hall of Famer. He's elite. There is no question about that. One of the greatest players of our generation. But now we're going to put him into a situation where Joel Embiid, who is he has struggled or not been healthy in the postseason, and you're adding a player like James Harden, who has not been elite in the postseason not even close to what he is in the regular season regular season he was a top three MVP guy for like five straight years he has never been a top three guy in the postseason I don't know if there's many postseasons where he's been a top five I can count to one where he's gone to the conference finals yeah but we got a list of 10 games that we can point to and be like James you are better than this and so that's the situ situation with Philly you can maintain how good you are but to up your game but so you're saying you shouldn't pay him as a closer no, no, no. Well, I would, and, and most, you got James most down important to. words you said were Embiid championship window. And that's why even if you are skeptical that they can get over the hump with this group, you have to ask yourself, what's plan B if he leaves? Bobby Marks will probably tell us about that soon. Yeah. Perk, do you believe that this duo, that they can bring a championship to Philadelphia? Well, I, I do. But it's no plan B, Zach. It's plan A when it comes down to Daryl Moore and James Harden, okay? And they view the world as a lollipop, and all they keep doing is exchanging leaks. And that's that's what it is, okay? Because when you think about okay. it right now and where they at, it's all about James Harden. The firing of Doc Rivers was all about James Harden. And so now you have to worry about, you know, what he's going to come back for, because I believe Darryl Moore is not going to let James walk away, whether he's opts in or they sign him to a contract. And Vince talked about this, the growth of Tyrese Maxey. That is so huge. 
Tyrese Maxey is is really at that border where he's scratching all-star caliber player into, you know, elite young star, in my opinion. And James Harden is going to have to sacrifice. And they fired Doc Rivers because James Harden didn't like the role that he was playing. And he averaged 20 and 10, led the league in assists. But if you had to ask me what the route did, what, what how Miami shocked the world in the Eastern Conference, does they have an opportunity with James Harden back in that lineup to win a championship? Absolutely. But it's going to come down to Joel and B. Is he going to be in great shape? Is he, is he going to be able to sustain that through the whole season and the postseason, keeping his weight down, taking the page out of Jokic's book, and doing what he needs to do with his body so that he can make sure he's in it for the long haul? Zach mentioned that he had a question for Bobby Mark, so let's bring in Bobby now. Uh, Bobby, there's some trickle-down effects here. If James Harden actually does stay in Philadelphia, what would the impact be on guys like Fred Van Vliet, on guys like Kyrie Irving here? Yeah, right now we have Harden in the Sixers uh, roster right now. And Malika, the one guy that controls free agency is Fred Van Vliet. Right. And here's why. What happens if Van Vliet signs with Houston? All of a sudden, the market for Kyrie Irving, the market for James Harden if he becomes a free agent, all of a sudden evaporates. However... What happens if Harding goes back to, to Philly, Van Vliet back to Toronto, and then all of a sudden, Kyrie Irving has the ultimate leverage? Mm. Because remember, Houston has to spend $52 million of that money by the first day of the regular season. And now all of a sudden, the market for Irving opens up. And if you have more, if you have more for Bobby, you can, you're, you're welcome to ask. I, I no, I don't. He outlined the Kyrie Irving Phoenix situation earlier today, and you know, I, I don't really, I don't really know what else to say about that. I mean, if Houston wants to add Kyrie Irving to its rebuild, I guess that's cool. If Phoenix, if Phoenix actually watched the Brooklyn Nets movie and was like, yeah, let's do that again, that seems like a good idea. I don't think they will. So I don't know what the hell will happen. So again, question: If James Harden leaves. Fred Van Vliet, they can't re-sign him. The, the Philadelphia 76ers have no cap space to sign anybody if he leaves. Not Bobby? enough, not yep. enough to sign yeah. a real player. Not so ahead, Bobby. Leave it to Bobby. Go Bobby ahead, Bobby. authority. Let's pull, let's, let's pull them up. So let, let's look at if if uh, if Harden leaves. Okay, so we're going to take him out of there. We're, technically, they're over the salary cap because of their mid-level exception. So what you're staring at right now is potentially trying to look and move Tobias Harris. But you have the $12.4 million non-tax mid-level exception. This is what you're looking at. Seth Curry, Max Strews, Dante mm. DiVincenzo, players like that, basically to kind of fill that role. Mm. Yeah, you, you, yeah, you're not filling any any role with that. Mm. Not if you're losing Tobias Harris and you're also missing and James Harden. I agree. That's the issue right there. And there's some other players. See. Guess just, we're going to wait and find out. Just, just for everyone who's taking notes like Richard is at home, uh, some other notable players that have the deadline today, Andre Drummond, Josh Hart, and then, of course, James Harden as well. All right, we're just getting started here on NBA Today as we continue to count down to free agency. We have so much to get to. The Lakers, they were in the conference finals last year, and Dave just laid out all the options that the Lakers have this offseason. But, Zach, do you think this group, as presently constructed, has it reached its ceiling? I don't think that's necessarily true. I know getting to the conference finals is hard. You need some luck. You need good health. So you shouldn't necessarily expect to get back there just because you were just there. But I don't see why they can't set that. And, and beyond that is a goal. As long as LeBron can still be what LeBron is now, which is still a 29-8-8 eight and eight kind of player, as long as Anthony Davis is healthy, and we know that's an iffy proposition, Austin Reeves is going to get better. Hachimura is going to get better, assuming they bring those guys back. They just drafted a guy who they think they, it can help them right away. We'll see on D'Angelo Russell. And if they get a real player with the mid-level exception, and I think they can and will, that's another guy to add to the depth chart. Like, I, I don't see why the team they remade in the middle of the season, yeah. that was a legitimately good team. Throw the first 45 games out the window. That was a real team. I don't see why they can't build on that and get back similar quality team anyway. But, Zach, here's my question. What would that piece be? Like, what do you go get? Is it a point guard? Is it another uh, 3 and D guy? First. Like, what do you, like, you know, that, uh, what, yeah, what do you, what is, everyone wants, what takes them? Everyone wants Bruce everyone Brown. Everyone wants more 3 and D guys. They've been linked in the rumor mill to Bruce Brown. That would be a hand-in-glove fit. And it would also hurt the team that just beat you in the playoffs and won the title. That would be a great fit. A guy like that, 
No, I, I agree. And I, to the, the first 45, and, and even go back to the year prior to that, the Lakers didn't have enough adults. They didn't have enough, like, high-level professional. I'm not talking about age. I'm talking about guys. This is my role. I'm an NBA player in my role on multiple teams. Like, you look at Bruce Brown. If you can get Bruce Brown on your team, hypothetically, he's a professional. He's a 3 and D guy. He excels in his role. When you look at Vanderbilt, excels in his role. When you look at Hachimura, a little up and down trying to figure it out, excels in his role. You just that. need guys that are like, what do you need me to do? They need a bunch more soldiers and a few less generals of like as long as you show me what you need me to do I'll go and do that and I think the roster that they have I think they're two players away from getting back to the okay. conference finals next year because I think other teams will be improved other teams will have things worked out I think they need two more adults if you will two more I don't know about two more. I mean, you just look at the Western Conference. We know it starts with Denver. Denver yep. comes in as the favorite to win the championship. I think Phoenix is going to be awesome just on star power. And after that, it's, I mean, who, who are the Lakers afraid of uh, underneath that team? A lot of teams are in chaos. A lot of teams are in flux. John Moran is suspended. Right. Chaos Golden State has fit questions. What are they going to do to fill out the rest Clippers, of the roster? What are they going to do? Sacramento right. Kings. Did you say Sacramento Kings? Yes, I did. That's just because they gave you all that money at the end of your career. Sacramento's so good. Like, Sacramento's good. Sacramento's good. Sacramento's good. Sacramento's good. All these teams. Good. They are good. They Sacramento. also have Sacramento. the space to, to sign space. someone exactly. to make an impact. That's the thing. That's the big thing. They got to sign someone, but they need to sign a guy, in my opinion, Sacramento. I love their roster. I love their yeah. team. Love the They need to sign an adult. They need to sign one of those guys that's like, oh, I'm going to give you tw 10 to 12. I'm going to hustle. I'm going to rebound are anything you, you want. Are yeah. you an adult yet? Are no. You an adult? Okay, no. I just want to make sure. You're talking I, a lot about adults and adults. I was surrounded by adults. Vince is an adult. I'm Jason about Collins now. was an adult. Jason Kidd was an adult. <laughs> no. That's not my role. Is that was my my role was to play 82 adults. and give you 35 minutes a night. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.